Good morning. Before we get started, do you remember the last three memory verses? Philippians 4, verse 12. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. Psalms 37, verse 5. Commit everything you do to the Lord. Trust him and he will help you. In Proverbs chapter 28, verse 13. People who conceal their sins will not prosper, but if they confess and turn from them, they will receive mercy. As you listen to today's story, Moses in the burning bush, think about these questions. Number one. Where was Moses when God spoke to him from a burning bush? Number two, what did God tell Moses to do? Number three, where did God want to send Moses? Number four, why was Moses at first unwilling to go? Number five, what signs did God give to Moses to prove that God was with him? And number six, who did God send with Moses to speak for him? Moses in the burning bush. Moses looked much different now from the young man who had lived at Pharaoh's palace. No longer did he wear the princely Egyptian robes. Now he wore the coarse mantle of a shepherd. In his hand was a long shepherd's staff. Day after day and year after year, he had cared for his father-in-law's sheep. During this time, the sun and the wind had tanned his face and hands while the years had whitened his hair. One day, Moses led his flock to a green pasture near the foot of Mount Horeb. There, he saw a flame of fire spring out of a bush. He watched, expecting to see the bush become ashes, but the flame did not burn the bush. What a strange sight, thought Moses. I must take a closer look at this. As he started towards the bush, a voice called from the flame, Moses, Moses, and Moses replied, here I am. Do not come near the bush, the voice said. Take off your shoes, for you are standing on holy ground. Moses knew at once that God was speaking to him, for it was the custom for a person to remove his shoes when approaching a sacred place. Quickly, He stooped down and unfastened his sandals. Then he hid his face, for he was afraid to look at the flame again. I am the God of Abraham, of Isaac, and of Jacob, the voice said. I have seen the suffering of my people, the Israelites. I have heard their cries. Now I am come to deliver them from the Egyptians and to bring them into the land that I promised their fathers. How glad Moses must have been to hear their good news. But the voice continued, Come now, and I will send you to Pharaoh, that you may lead my people out of Egypt. Moses asked the Lord, Who am I that I should lead my people out of Egypt? This is too big a job for me to do. I will surely go with you and help you do it, answered the voice. And when you bring the Israelites to this mountain to worship me, you will know that I have been with you. Moses said, what if the Israelites have forgotten you? If they ask who is this God, what shall I say? And God said, tell them that my name is I am the one who is always living. Tell them that I am has sent you to help them. Do not be afraid, Moses, for they will believe you. With the elders of your families, go to Pharaoh and tell him, Our God, the God of the Hebrews, has met with us. Now let us go three days' journey into the wilderness to worship him. Moses listened carefully. He heard God say, At first the king will refuse to let you go. But after I have shown my power in Egypt, he will send you out of the land. Still, Moses was afraid his people would not believe God had sent him unless he could show them some sign for proof. So he asked God to give him a sign. God said, what is that in your hand? 
It is a rod, answered Moses. Throw it on the ground, God said. Moses obeyed, and the rod became a snake. When Moses saw the snake, he tried to get away from it. God said, do not be afraid. Take hold of his tail. Again, Moses obeyed, and the snake became a rod once more. Then God told Moses, put your hand on your chest under your cloak and bring it out again. And Moses did this. His hand was white with leprosy. How afraid he was. But God said, put your hand on your chest again. When Moses obeyed, his hand became normal. This sign was to prove to the Israelites and the Egyptians that God had sent Moses. If the people did not believe these signs, Moses was to take water from the river and pour it on the ground. The water would become blood. This would be the third sign. Still, Moses felt unwilling to go. He told God, you know I cannot speak well. You know I am slow to speak. Then the Lord reminded Moses, am I not the Lord who made man's mouth? Go, and I will teach you what to say. Then Moses pleaded, Oh, my Lord, please send someone else. God said, I will send your brother Aaron with you. He will speak the words you tell him. Aaron is already on his way to meet you. At last, Moses was ready to obey God. He led his flock back to Jethro, his father-in-law, and said, let me return to my people in Egypt and see if they are still alive. And Jethro said, go in peace. God spoke again to Moses, return to Egypt for those who wanted to kill you are dead. Moses took his wife and sons and started for Egypt. On the way, he met Aaron. How glad the brothers were to see each other. Moses told all that God had said, and together the two brothers returned to Egypt. When they arrived, they gathered the elders of Israel. Aaron told them that God had sent Moses to be their deliverer. When the people heard the words of the Lord and saw his signs, they believed and were glad. They bowed their heads and thanked God for hearing their prayers. Now let's go back to the questions from earlier. Number one, where was Moses when God spoke to him from a burning bush? He was on the mountain of Horeb. Number two, what did God tell Moses to do? God told him to take off his shoes. Number three, where did God want to send Moses? God wanted to send Moses back to Egypt. Number four, why was Moses at first unwilling to go? He believed the task was too great. Number five, what signs did God give Moses to prove that God was with him? Moses' rod became a serpent and his hand became leprous. And number six, who did God send with Moses to speak for him? God sent Moses' brother, Aaron. This week's memory verse is Psalms chapter 23, verse 4a. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Think about it. The painting in the warehouse. As owner of the world's most influential newspaper, William Randolph Hearst was a very rich and powerful man. He was also an art collector. He loved beautiful paintings. One day, Mr. Hearst saw a picture of two particularly exquisite works of art and decided that he just had to have them for his personal collection. He summoned one of his staff members and told him to mount a search to find out where those paintings were located and to purchase them, regardless of the cost. His staff spent weeks traveling, writing letters, and making phone calls to locate the two paintings. 
Finally, they were found in a warehouse on the other side of town in the very city in which Hertz operated his newspaper. Hearst was filled with anticipation as his staff led him to the warehouse where the paintings were located. When they arrived at the warehouse, Hearst was suddenly confused. This is where the paintings are located? He asked incredulously. Yes, responded his staff member. Is something wrong? Well, I already own this warehouse and everything in it, he said. Those paintings have been mine all along. Application. Have you ever felt like you were a nobody, a person who would never amount to anything? When you are feeling that way, it's easy to look with envy at other people who are more talented, more gifted, better looking, and feel bad about yourself. But it's likely that you haven't checked out the painting in the warehouse. God has given you talents and abilities that you probably don't even realize you have. The key is to discover them and to use them. Psalms 139.14a I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. And then our memory verse goes on to tell us in Psalms 23.4a Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thy art with me. Psalms 23, 4a. This concludes today's lesson.